your uh, past is nothing but electrical impulses in your brain. And that, that's just your memories. That doesn't create who you are unless you make it a tattoo uh, onto your soul. You have to ask for what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I look, I, I won a Rolex at a legal conference in Atlanta last week. I knew I was going to win that. I put it out there in the universe. Uh, they said I'm a Southern Fried MFR. <laughs> and they used a different word than that. I want to help change the revolution of how lawyers practice law. Hey, I'm Armando LaDuke, producer, film actor, and owner of LaDuke Entertainment. I have chosen a life off the beaten path and wanted to find others that are doing the same. Spaghetti on the Wall is a show based on all of the years that I've thrown spaghetti on the wall and nurtured what's stuck. We will share fun stories, ideas, tips, tricks, and more. Welcome to Spaghetti on the Wall. What's up, what's up, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Spaghetti on the Wall. Today, really good friend, longtime friend, um, someone that I admire, respect greatly, Mr. Steven Rue is here. How are you, sir? I'm spectacular. It's great to be here. It is awesome to have you. I know Thank we've, you. it's 2005, it was like when I first moved here, met you, yeah. definitely in the uh, film business, yeah. um, and you just... You're one of these people in the community that just is relentlessly passionate, is always doing things, is always moving the lead needle forward, is always the, the man in the arena, you know. So I was like, man, we got to get Stephen Rue on the on the show, and so I'm glad you're here. Hey, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here, and and this is just an extrapolation of living life to the fullest, and it's a, it's fun to do something like this. So thank you. Yeah. So you're an artist. You're an attorney. You're an actor. You got in, you film producer for a minute. Yeah. Um, what else do you do? Well, right now I'm in the process. I'm about to start to get my doctorate in organizational leadership. I want to help change the revolution of how lawyers practice law around the country and, and actually the world. Uh, what's happening is that people are becoming much more self-aware. You see the five-star ratings. You see People want customer service. They want client-centered uh, service. And so lawyers need to get out of the paradigm that they are um, dry and somewhat surgical, and they, they need to be human beings. Mm -hmm. And I'm a certified life coach as well through LSU, and I got some leadership at Harvard Law School, certificate, certified there. And uh, my goal is to perpetually learn more and more and then disseminate that knowledge and whatever wisdom that comes from it to other people so that I can improve their lives, improve the uh, profession of law, in, uh, person by person, lawyer by lawyer, law firm by law firm, so then their behavior has changed such that they actually have a good relationship with their client. They fully understand, know their clients. They, un they totally respect their clients, and they then understanding their needs can do what they can both from their own personal experience or skill level uh, but also their ethical level, but also to meet those needs mm. very precisely. Are, are you in the process of writing a book or yes. is this, is this coming up? Yes. Like, cause I know, I, I, I mean, you know, with authority and, 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 you know, and consulting and coaching and stuff, right? Like there's a book. Oh yeah. Th What's the topic? Well, actually the uh, there's, there's more than one book coming I'm sure. out right now. <laughs> one book is the Southern Fried Lawyer. Uh, I like that. I think you have a federal trademark on it. I was uh, in court around a year ago, mm -hmm. a little over a year, because it takes a while to get your federal trademark. But we won a case, and the other side came up to my my client and said, you know, I have to uh, make it a little bit more genteel for your audience, but uh, they said I'm a Southern Fried MFR. <laughs> and they used a different word than that. And so I, I put that on Facebook. That I, that the other party after I destroyed him called me a Southern Fried MFR. Uh -huh. Insert your own words there, <laughs> folks. And it exploded. People just were loving it, loving it, loving it. And I said, "Well, you know what? I think I have something here." So I uh, now I'm doing. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, etc. Social media galore as the Southern Fried Lawyer. And my goal is really um, to be a life coach to to disseminate some fun uh, facts on how we can improve our own lives and th those of others, and uh, and to do it institutionally too for businesses. How, how do we do that? 
Just give me some, give me, give me a couple tips. Well, I think uh, to be, we need to go into what our values are, figure out what our values are um, personally and align our values with what we want to do, what our true passions are. Because if you're passionate about what you do, you're going to do it better. You're going to stick with it. You're going to want to improve it as much as humanly possible. And then be both empathetical and sympathetical to your client, to your customer, whoever you're providing a service or product to, you want to understand that this is very important to them. They're given their uh, value. And in many cases, they're given their future in in case of lawyers or doctors or Indian chiefs. They're given their future in in some degree to uh, this other individual. And we need to respect that. We need to literally take the time to absorb as much information from our clients and understand them as much as possible. As a lawyer, what I try to do as well is I try to take away the cloak of their disabling, limiting beliefs. Uh, When they come into my office, because I have rationalized to myself that if I can help them be a happier, better, healthier person, then they're going to be a better client. Then I'm going to be able to have a better chance of getting a good result for them in the courtroom. And as a result of that, I have an invisible shredder in my office that we take away and we have long talks about those limiting beliefs, their personal narratives, their personal stories that they tell themselves. Quite often they say that I'm, they're victims and they can't do this, they can't do that. Life won't give them what they want in life. And basically I say BS, um, you know, you need to be the person that God chose you and wants you to be. And just because you've had these uh, tragedies, these obstacles, these problems in your life, whether somewhat self-imposed or done by third parties or life in general, that doesn't dictate who you are and can be. Your uh, past is nothing but electrical impulses in your brain, and that's just your memories. That doesn't create who you are unless you make it a tattoo uh, onto your soul. And so we need to get away from that. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, we're going to do an Etch-A-Sketch. Look, I'm over 60 years old. Etch-A-Sketch is this little toy that we used to play with and we could draw on with two little knobs and you could draw little little (laughs) pictures. And then if you didn't like it, you'd literally shook shook this, this little toy and the picture would go away. Well, I try to tell them we're etch-a-sketching your personal story that you've been carrying with you for whatever ridiculous reason, but I don't make it, I don't say it's ridiculous, but for whatever reason, which frankly doesn't have a good rationality behind it. Sure. And uh, take off that costume of a victim, a costume of something less than who it should be. We're shredding that, that thing. We're shredding it. So you need to pick out what is your authentic costume? What is your authentic superhero? You know, some people say, fake it till you make it, but I say, state it and be it. Mm. And then, quite often, I would say majority of the time, in all candor, people leave my office walking differently. Empowered. Empowered, yes. They, they, sit, they sit stronger. They no longer have the physicality. Mm -hmm. We have to get away from the language and the focus. You know, Tony Robbins says, things that can change your emotion and change your life are your physicality, your focus, and your language. It's language not only to other people, but it's language to ourselves. What is that inner voice, that conversation that we're having with ourselves? Is it negative? Because we have in, in, uh, in, in life a predisposition to talk negatively. And the reason comes back from when we were uh, cavemen that we had to watch out and be, be watch out for the dinosaur coming to eat us. And so we had to say we, we live based on fear to right. survive. And as we've evolved as human beings, well, yes, we sometimes create fear, but we need to get past that. We have to learn how to be comfortable with our uncomfortableness to change the pattern we've been in for years. And that's one of my goals. I mean, it's difficult to overcome 30, 40, 50 years of just ingrained habits. Yes, no question. Is it consistency? Is it mentorship? Is it, you know, is it a a, a complete mindset shift? Like, how do you, how do you get out of that? Motivation only works so long. 
motivation will maybe get you out of the bed. You're listening to a motivational speaker, a Les Brown, a Tony Robbins, or someone else, Zig Ziglar, whoever uh, the flavor of your motivation is. Mm -hmm. But that only will work so long. You have to develop some discipline. Discipline is not a nasty word. You know, it's not a four-letter word. I promise you it's not. Count the letters. And so when you have a little bit of discipline, you don't, big chunk it. People make the mistake, oh, I'm going to lose 50 pounds or I'm going to uh, whatever, X. Well, you don't lose it all at once. Guess what? You lose it incrementally. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to run a marathon? I've, I've done 14 of them. Full? Oh, yeah. Seven New Yorks. But you run it a step at a time. You know how to write a book? One sentence at a time. Maybe a word at a time. Mm -hmm. Really, incremental. Incremental changes, just the smallest incremental change can make a huge difference in people's life. If you think about this, and I have um, a, a saying that I like to use, you want to be better than yesterday. And also consider the 1% rule of life. What's a 1% rule? Well, how you ask yourself, how can I be 1% better today? What is that 1% thing? Not a lot, but a little. But if you, it's just like developing wealth. How you do that? Incrementally. Over time, it develops that momentum. And if you continue to do these small things, get up and take a step. Next day, take two steps. Next day, do a block. Next day, do two blocks. You end up walking a mile. Then it goes from there. You then see how uh, it affects other parts of your life. We, in our lives, uh, 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 in the self-improvement world, need to look at all of the aspects of our life, the physical, the relationship, the spiritual, the financial, the work, all of the mental health, all of these various aspects of our life so that our wheel is well-rounded. Mm -hmm. Because one single thing in one area of your life can derail the entire train. Sure. Happens over and over and yeah. over again. But guess what? Here's the thing. Life is a, a journey. <clears throat> There's, there's no such thing as an ultimate destination, mm -hmm. all right? Maybe when you die, and then we'll, there's an adventure beyond that with a, none of us know until we get there. But as we go, it's our journey that we always are. It's uh, Kaizen, continuing, never-ending improvement, that wonderful Japanese philosophy of perpetually trying to improve. And we can do that. We all have problems. We all have issues. We've all had problems in our youth, problems with our family, problems with perhaps our health, problems with etc. We all have them. That makes us human beings. Mm -hmm. But if we wake up every day and go, I'm blessed. I am living in a spirit of abundance, not in negativity. That if you, if you really focus on your blessings, I'm blessed to be here right now talking with you. I'm blessed that I'm alive. I'm blessed that I have a wonderful mother and stepfather and sister and fiance and my fiance's wonderful daughter. I'm blessed that I have a beautiful uh, law firm. I'm blessed that the wind hits my face in the morning. I'm blessed the sun comes out. I'm blessed when I drive the causeway, a bridge here in New Orleans, that I can see the beautiful lake. I'm blessed because I can see the seagulls. I'm blessed because I, there's a beautiful tree right in front of me. We're blessed. We have countless blessings, but we have to focus on that. And what happens is, know what we do? We focus on negativity. We focus on the darkness. We focus on the pain. And we, people have a go-to. They go, they go, get into a mindset, oh, things aren't working out. Life is horrible. You know, nothing's going to change. Well, wait a minute. Who am I talking to? You're talking to yourself, and you are... The monster that you feed is the monster that will win. I was talking about that yesterday. Exactly. Is that talking right? About that. Yeah. Well, I have an employee who's kind of struggling uh, right now with heartbreak, you know. Yeah. But um, this too shall pass. Yes, but this too shall pass, yeah. you know. But he also, <laughs> I'm not going to put him on blast. But it's anyway, right. it was the, the, the thing that we were talking about is like the wolves inside, you know. And, oh, and yeah. who wins? It's, yes, it's the, it's the wolf that you feed. It is. It's the wolf that you feed. Sometimes... It's okay to get rid of that other, that negative wolf. Yeah. Just get rid of it. 
Don't give it any power. Don't feed it whatsoever. In fact, make sure you feed the positivity in your life, yeah. that you feel the blessings. And if you are, in fact, truly full of grace, if you're full of appreciation, I'm a, I'm a religious person, so I'm bringing that in for a moment to say that if you are appreciative of the blessings that God has given you, it's almost like, how dare you ignore that? Right. You know, we, we need to... Get out of that depression. Get out of that sadness. No, yeah, some people need some mental mental health help. That's fine. But it all starts with believing that you're okay. Mm-hmm. We're all okay. Um, my father, my, my, my stepfather, who was really more of a father to me, committed suicide when I was almost 12 years old. He went out. He was an, he was an eye surgeon. We lived in Atlanta at the time. One Sunday... 50 years ago, he went up to uh, his bedroom, locked the door, and put a gun in his mouth and and shot and killed himself. My mother and my little sister found him. And, and, uh, you know, I was spared from that. I was at camp. But you can only imagine the, the trauma that that has caused and the ripple effect. There's such a ripple effect on how other people affect our lives. And it took me a long time, and I think that's part of we need to take those things that happen to us and make that lemonade. We need to f- learn from them because life is, there is suffering in everyone's life. But what are we going to do about it? Are we going to are we going to say, oh, this thing happened with my stepfather, therefore I'm going to define myself in such a fashion that. I can't be productive and happy in my own life. I can't be a responsible adult and and be responsible for my children. I can't do this. I can't do that. The answer is hell no. You need to know that tomorrow is another day and tomorrow can and will be better and that you need to be active in making your life better and making other people's lives better. If you wait for things to happen to you, it's not going to happen as you plan. Know why? Because you didn't plan. Right. You're right. Let me ask you this. In America, because things are so convenient and so right now and so microwave society and like, I need it now. And I, you know, do you think that that is affecting the, the mentality of, you know, of, of like, staying positive and, you know, cause there's the work that has to go into something these days isn't necessarily the work that needed to go into it 50 years ago. Does that make sense? It's hard to find people that want to work anymore. Uh, right. As lawyers and, and uh, I own a couple of other companies and it's hard to find employees. It's shocking to me. And it's, it, it, there is a somewhat of an entitlement culture out there, but I would uh, suggest to anybody Turn off the damn news. Don't talk to, you need to get a, you need to be the least common denominator of all your friends, that everyone has something going on. You know, uh, Warren Buffett says you're, you're a combination of your top five or seven friends, Mm -hmm. you know, and that you need to improve who you hang with. And, and if they're growing, the chances and propensity of you to grow in your life is much greater. So you got to sometimes say, I love your friend. I love you. I love you, Sue. I love you, Sam. But, you know, I'm sorry. I'm going to grow. I'm going to go on. I, I will always love you. I will respect you. But my life and what I want, the dreams I want to accomplish in my life are so much better. You know, I wrote a post today on uh, social media that said, uh, what would you do in your life if you knew that you were able to accomplish it? That's one question. I have three questions for you. The second question is, what are the limiting beliefs that are stopping you from accomplishing that goal? And then number three, what are you doing to challenge those limiting beliefs? Why are you accepting those limiting beliefs as as fact? Right. I want you to think about that and do something about it. Pursue your own passions with vigor with vigor, with rage, not negative rage, but with, with, with some umph. Yeah. With umph, with, with some spunk, you know, you want to be the, uh, 
uh, uh, brave heart right. of yourself. It's it's hard to explain passion, I guess, to someone that do, that maybe hasn't figured out what their passion is, right? Yeah. Because you 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 have it, I have it. You yeah. know, like I yeah. found it, you know, early on. Yeah. You know, thankfully, you know. But how about you know, folks that may not have like found it yet or, or, or maybe they're not aware of it or, or have they not slowed down enough to have figured it out, you know, or maybe they don't trust it. What do you say to the, you know, to folks like that? Experiment with life. We get caught in our little microcosms of patterns of what we do. You know, I, it's like, I go to this one particular restaurant in Covington, Louisiana. I order the same thing every day, every time. It's amazing. But we all order the same thing every time in our lives, no matter what we're t doing. We do the same things. We are in that, that bubble that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, it's probably because you haven't been exposed to it yet. And so we, you have to go and say, I'm going to see if I like art. I'm going to go see if I like uh, concerts. Whatever it is that you may like, you don't know until you try it. You know, every single expert in the world or virtuoso that has ever existed in history at one time was an amateur at one time had never picked up a brush had, had never uh, hit a note in their lives. The best business people in the world had never looked at a balance sheet before mm -hmm. you have to start somewhere. And as I said earlier in this podcast, it's incremental. And so experiment, get outside of that comfort zone. It's a great place to be. Yeah. Once you get comfortable and being uncomfortable, then you are in the arena of growth, of learning, of experiences. Yeah. Not all of them are going to be good. That's okay. If the if life was everything that we wanted, it'd be kind of boring. Oof. You know? It, the variety of life is also in the disappointments. Because in the disappointments, that is where the true lessons come. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't learn if you're patting yourself on the back. So what you need to do is, well, that's a, ooh, that's a whole different thing. I've been Mr. Ego all my life, and I've been working hard to deal with it. But the reality of it is, um, you have to be humbled. And sometimes you can humble yourself without flatulating yourself, without torturing yourself about it. Just sometimes you just talk to yourself. I need to move on and be the person that God wanted me to be. As I say. Yeah. I was um, so funny. You're talking about this in particular, because I think that I two weeks ago, I had an epiphany and I talked about this um, on, on one of my podcasts, but I always had the good intentions of going to the grocery store, yeah. buying the healthiest of foods. And I'm <laughs> like, I'm going to cook every day. I'm going to do this, blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. I'm busy. I'm a busy person. Mm -hmm. So two weeks later, the food is nasty. I'm throwing it away, throwing away $60, $70 worth of food on the regular because my good intention is that I'm going to cook this food that's good for me and all of that. So right. my epiphany was that planning, I, I plan for my business. I plan for, you know, for those, my, my professional life, but I don't necessarily plan for my personal life. And so the, the epiphany that I had two weeks ago was that I have to also implement strategies and plans for my personal things. If I want to get better at that, if I want to eat better, if I want to work out, if I want better relationships, I think people or business people in general, yeah. they tend to think about their business, you know, and wanting to, to improve that, but maybe not necessarily their personal life. What happens know? I think is that when you start something new, like you losing weight and going to whole foods and getting the best of foods that are for you, you're motivated. And, but once that motivate motivation weans, you need to step into the role of that discipline. Right. And also try to re-motivate yourself periodically as well. What I've learned is you need to really picture in all of your senses, imagine your end goal, who you are when you are, have accomplished whatever you want to accomplish bathe in that feel it how does it make you feel mm -hmm. why are you doing it did it satisfy you are you a different person and a lot of times when we understand that it's not just the 
losing the X amount of pounds or, or being able to lift this amount of weights, that is ultimately what counts is how we feel about us in accomplishing something. And if we really take the time to visualize, try to, try to use as much of your senses as possible, verbalization is terribly important because when you say, I'm going to lose X pounds, and then you tell the world, then you're really motivated, okay? <laughs> yeah. You're motivated because yeah, yeah, you, the accountability. Yeah, it's accountability, but it's also a contract that you're kind of making with the world and yourself, and it keeps you going. I promise you, if you got on social media every single day and say, I'm going to eat this salad, I'm going to go and buy this, I'm going to lose, I'm going to tell you how much I weigh today, I'm going to tell you how much I lose tomorrow, and that I promise you I'm going to accomplish that goal, what do you think your chances are of accomplishing that are? I think they're going to be a lot higher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think yeah. if, I'm, if I'm putting that on social media, yeah. I think, yeah, the for why? sure. Because if you don't make that commitment, if you don't say it out loud to the world, to the universe, you have to ask for what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I look, I, I won a Rolex at a legal conference in Atlanta last week. I knew I was going to win that. I put it out there in the universe. Now, we've all seen the secret and all of that. Whether it's true or not, guess what? I believe it's true because it doesn't hurt me not, you know, if, it, if it's not true, it doesn't hurt me. So I'm saying I'm putting it out there in the universe. I'm verbalizing it. I'm going to write it down. Writing down your, your goals are very important. Mm. You're starting to internalize as part of the contract that you have with yourself in the world. We all need to do that. And get up in the morning, have a personal self-huddle with yourself. Yeah. We need to start realizing, number one, we have, we're blessed and that, you know, we, the first thing we need to do, in my view, is thank God and count our blessings and, and declare to the world and to ourselves, this is going to be a spectacular day. And then, and then say what you need to do and can commit yourself to those things, those incremental changes that are going to make today better than yesterday and tomorrow better than today. Those are the things that if we continually do it, we're going to continually blossom. That's awesome. So what's the goal in the next five years? My goal in the next five years is to be transformative, both personally and professionally. I want to uh, define, uh, redefine and rebuild myself in all the various aspects of my life that we talked about. And also to uh, be a, a speaker, a motivational speaker, to help lawyers, to write books, to have a good following that I can inspire and motivate other people so that they can be better in their own personal lives and also uh, just as important, if not more important, to improve the lives of others that they know. That's awesome. Yeah. Why, why did you want to be a lawyer? I wanted you to kind be of a lawyer that? because I had no idea what I was doing when I was young and my uncle was a lawyer. And... <sighs> I didn't go into it with the best intentions. I wanted to make a lot of money. And as I evolved as a human being, I realized there was so much more to it than that. And that I had to find my way, my avenue of passion in the profession that I had. There's a good book that just came out called Unreasonable Hospitality. I'm in the process of reading it now. And I love it. It's about the... the uh, restaurant in industry in New York, mm -hmm. really it's about service in general to people. It's about how can you provide extraordinary services. You need to be above great. You need to be extraordinary. Right. And be that one, one percent of one percent and, and take it to another level. How do you create that? First of all, you have to be competent in what you do, which takes hours, if not thousands of hours, but you have to start someplace. And decide what you want to do that has that you have passion in. You have to find your why. You have to find your values. What is your value statement? What is your mission statement of your own personal life? And then find something that is in sync with that for what you do. For example, what you do in the film industry, in the entertainment industry, is something that I know because I've known you for many years is something that you're extraordinarily passionate about, and therefore you're extraordinarily good at it. And I think that you have to know yourself, discover your passions, get rid of a lot of your limiting beliefs, and become the true authentic person you're supposed to be, and then follow that path 
And then you get to a certain level of satisfying your own personal needs that you get to this level of contribution and service Mm. that you really want to help other people to the point that their lives are significantly improved. That's amazing. It took a while, you know, I'm a little long in the teeth, as they say, but it took a while for me to get there, but I feel like I'm a better, wiser human being than I was 20 years ago. And, um, I hope to be better if I live another 20 years better than I am today. Uh, but I want to leave people with uh, a legacy of, of happiness, of improvement, of appreciation. And, That's awesome. and, and, I, and I think that more lawyers need to find that. Lawyers are extremely unhappy as a profession. They're stressed out. Uh, they don't like what they do. Yeah. And I think that if they listen to some of... Uh, my philosophy, their attitudes may shift and they may find new meaning in what they're doing and more purpose and uh, then can be much more effective in the lives of their clients. I think mentorship is paramount. I think having someone, yeah. you know, to, to, to guide you and to understand where you are and not just like one or two sessions, but like really understand you for a while and like can, can start to see like your patterns and go like, all right, you're getting into this again to have institutional knowledge about yourself. Right. And, and it's good to know what you don't know. The scary part is not knowing what you don't know. Right. And we all have that level of total obliviousness to things that could significantly improve our lives. It's the darkness around the corner because we never get to that corner. We need to, we need to go into that darkness a little, that uncomfortable zone, you know, right? Right. And, and whatever it is, do it, live life. Let, let the ocean spray your face. Yeah. You know, do things. Don't just sit home on the couch watching the news and watching other people live and watching, you know, what is Brittany doing today? Right. Okay. God Even though I do, do, I do, I do that. Okay. I, I well, it's kind of, Brittany. I know me she too. Does. Cause she's, it's, it's just, it's a show. Oh, oh my Lord. It's a show. You know, I, I pray for <laughs> It's a show. All right. Uh, tell them where they can find you in this camera right here. Well, you can find me at my law firm, stevenrue.com and also on social media as the Southern fried lawyer. That's awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and listening to Spady Andy on the Wall. Uh, another episode brought to you by Leduc Entertainment for all of your digital marketing needs, social media, distribution, videos, all that we got you. And we'll see you all next time. Peace.